Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Have I got a fun video for you today. Today I'm going to play a best throw round of disc golf with a single disc in two different plastics called the Innova Gazelle. Let's go have fun. So today we're going to have a best throw round of disc golf and what I'll do is I will take the best drive uh, off the tee. I'll throw this gazelle and then I'll throw this other gazelle just out there and whichever drive is what I'll take and I'll just play the rest of the round normally. I'm not going to do uh, two up shots and two putts or anything like that, but the drives off the tee, I'll take the best throw. So let me tell you about these two gazelles. So this is the same mold by Innova. It's been around since about 1999. I'll put the date up on the screen just so you know when the mold was approved. And it was a fairly popular disc from them for the last couple decades, uh, but it ended up becoming out of production because other discs basically outsold it, like the T-Bird, etc. And so these are still fairly popular and fairly respected fairway drivers uh, that Innova produces, and they, they've made a lot of different plastics over the, the couple decades and more that they've had this mold. And these are six-speed drivers with a good bit of stability. They actually fit between like your five speed mid ranges, like your Lion, your Shark 3, your Rock 3, and then your seven speed fairway drivers like your Eagle and your T-Bird. So between the seven and the five speed. And these are definitely slower discs than the seven speed, but they're not as overstable as you might get in a standard T-Bird or Eagle. So um, they're very controllable fairway drivers, I'll say that. And I think they're very beginner friendly, even though these are somewhat stable. But anyways, um, Sorry to ramble, but effectively, these are two different plastics I'll be throwing, and I'll tell you a bit more as I'm playing. So let's go ahead and try this Pro Gazelle. <clears throat> these are both max weight. They're like 175 grams. The basket's that way. I'm still working on my form. Just got over COVID, as you can tell, so I haven't been able to make the progress that I want. There we go. Look at that. I did put that on too much hyzer, but that's why we're doing a best throw around. In theory, that pro plastic is supposed to make that disc a little bit less stable, but in my experience, and I have a lot of experience with gazelles since about 2020, since I first started using them, and they're, they're decently stable. Good amount of hyzer will have them uh, fade significantly. So I'm gonna try to throw a little bit more flat. There we go. I, I still hyzered it a little bit, but that's okay. I'm working the kinks out in my form. Okay, these didn't land too far from each other. I'll have to work on throwing a flat drive uh, as time passes. Okay, I'm just gonna throw this Rhino here from the Pro Gazelle. Heck yeah, love it. Well, I haven't played in a few days. I'm still recovering, but uh, I'm glad I at least was able to pull this one off. <laughs> Okay, I wrote down some notes to go over a couple things I wanted to talk about with these discs. Uh, this first one is in their Driver Pro Plastic. That is a mix between Pro and Star, as near as I can tell. It's more durable than your typical disc that comes out in Pro Plastic, like you know, R Pro or XT Pro or one of those that are designed for like you know, mid-ranges and approach discs. So uh, this one, um, I also like the color, but it was a factory second. It had like a really ugly stamp or the, ugly, the one with the ugliest stamp so that no one else had to. <laughs> and then I wiped it with acetone and I just put a little uh, Sharpie on it with, with uh, the mold name on it. And, but you know, you could get one of these from the factory second store uh, and you know, do what you want, diet or whatever. But they have other uh, plastics as well. The one that excited me the most, however, is this Metal Flake Proto Glow uh, variant of uh, Champion Plastic. This is uh, pretty uh, stable, uh, sturdy. It's not as flexible as Luster, but it glows really well. And it should be a touch more stable than this Pro Plastic, but I have yet to see that in the one throw I've done with each of them. So we're gonna find out as we play just how stable these are, if there is a real difference, or if the mold out of the box is pretty much the same despite the plastic. Okay, as usual, I'm gonna throw the red one first, which is the Pro version. I wanna see if it's just any more stable. I feel it's easier for me to tell if I do it in the same order. There we go. I did try to get that a little more flat, um, but you can see it has some stability. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this the same way, throw it the same way. Oh, I put a little more ante on it, but you can see it's still got a lot of stability to throw, to have it fade, you know, to fight out of the turn and have it fade. So that's pretty impressive. That's, those are about 200 foot throws, so you kind of get an idea of what they do in the hands of a rec level disc golfer like myself. Well, I have to say these both 
are a bit more stable than the Gazelle that I remember. I used to have one that was yellow green in standard Champion plastic, and it just didn't seem to me that was as stable as this, so interesting. Okay, I'm getting worked here by my voice, so I'm sorry I sound like a discount Barry White here. I'm gonna have to do a forehand. There we go, that's what I want. Well, at least my forehand is getting better, even if my voice isn't. <laughs> So I have to point out the very first gazelle that I owned I bought in 2020 from Infinite Discs and it was, you know, a champion gazelle. It was built like a tank. I actually called it my wood chopper. And the reason I called it that was actually an endearing uh, term for it because it was the most durable disc that I had, the only one in champion plastic. I also had a Star Leopard, a Star uh, Cheetah, and a DX Whippet. And it was just a lot more uh, indestructible than those. So I used that a lot, but unfortunately, I accidentally grip locked and threw it into the water, <laughs> into a bayou, never to be seen again. So I wanted to get one for the longest time, and that's when I ended up seeing this. I saw some other ones in G-Star I didn't want that were green, like grass color green so i skipped those when this came out in pro plastic i was like "Ooh, i gotta get one so i got it used it a couple times you know a couple different loadouts that i had over a period of time um but when this came out i knew i just knew i had to get this one so yeah pretty happy with uh this now this hole would be better for someone with a really good forehand to, to throw. These are relatively flat. They don't have the highest dome. They do have a glide of four, which I think is about accurate given how flat they are. And it's got a slight stub nose that makes it more stable. So it's definitely something, um, if you're gonna try to get it to turn, you're gonna have to put it on some Anheuser with some power. So uh, that's not something that I've got, but I've got to get it closer towards that basket. I just want to get this past this tree. There we go. I guess I'm warmed up now. Oh, I did that wrong with the swing. It fell out of my hand because it's been an improper swing on my part. That is unfortunate, but I've got a good throw at least out of those two. Okay, I'm 70 feet away, which is the edge of my effective accurate range for putting, but I'm not gonna try to throw it given the uh, natural OB that's behind the basket. I just want to get this close. That's what daddy wanted. So just to give you a little bit of inside baseball, I am getting over COVID. I feel just fine. My voice has just been out for about a week, which is really weird. Uh, th things don't taste 100%. Everything tastes a little weird right now, but not contagious, but I'm staying away from people. But yeah. Uh, oh, another thing is, you know, we had Hurricane Barrel come through like a barrel and uh, that wrecked a lot of our courses. So I am more limited in what courses I can film these reviews in, but I'm gonna be trying to film in different locations over time. So definitely stay tuned. If you wanna see more reviews from a rec level disc golfer like myself with a better voice, uh, in the future, I'll have more of these reviews, disc throwdowns, etc., on more courses. Another thing I wanna point out is the Gazelle is not an in production mold, it's technically out of production. However, Innova does make one or more runs of these per year, usually in different plastics, usually under different categories, like uh, uh, limited, uh, they have a limited production section on their pro shop. They also have a factory second section of their pro shop where you know runs that don't quite make the cut you know, visually, they get put in the factory second. Uh, since I lost my champion one in 2020, I bought it in 2020. Uh, they've had G-Star out. They've had, of course, DX out. They've had uh, multiple runs of that over the years. Uh, they've had uh, Pro, and now they've had this particular ver variant of uh, Champion Plastic. I bought this under the limited production section of their store, and this I bought under their factory second. Okay, that was pretty terrible. I tried a couple forehand throws, they were terrible. <laughs> so I had to cut those out. We're just gonna try backhand. Uh, if you guys would like to see uh, maybe a sidearm September series for, for, for me, uh, I'm thinking about doing that next month where I throw most of my rounds forehand and I do a lot of practice forehand, try to actually get a sidearm. So, all right, I'm gonna have to do some Anheuser flexing somewhat low just to get it out there. Even then, these are definitely more stable than I remember for the Gazelle. So if you're, say, a new player, you want to try the six-speed disc from Innova, I would say get you a Leopard. Use that a lot so it beats in so it's less stable. Get you a Cheetah. 
Don't use as much as a leopard so it retains the stability. Try to get it in star plastic because then it does make that. And then get you a Gazelle Pro G Star or Champion or Star, any of the more premium plastics, but this is definitely stable. There we go. Uh, I had such great things planned for it. All right, so the whole point of this review round is that I play the round and I review it while I'm playing it. Typically, I'll do that for discs I have a lot of experience with, so you get to see them fly the way I can let them fly. Unfortunately for me, it's been over a year since I've thrown a gazelle. These are more stable than I realized, so I'm, I'm not giving these as good of a set of throws as I would like, so I'm hoping I can adjust between now and then. At least I can putt. Okay, a couple backhand throws coming up. There we go. I felt like I got that flat to maybe slight Anheuser. I'm, I'm dialing things in. I'm learning how to throw these discs. I do miss the Gazelle, and this I think has a use as a slightly longer distance overstable mid-range for me, I think because the most overstable mid-range that I'm using right now is the Rock X3, and this I can get a tiny bit more distance, but it's also a tiny bit more stable, so interesting. There we go. That actually felt good. Oh yeah. Well, well, well. If it isn't the consequences of my own actions. The cool thing about having a gazelle back in the day and a star leopard and a star cheetah and a DX whippet is I had the full gamut of stabilities for six speed discs. And given the speed that I threw, I could throw maybe 230, 250 feet, you know, at the most on the course with, uh, you know, a good throw for me. <clears throat> but it was nice having that level of stability. I put four of them in one of those little lunchbox style bags, you know, three mids, three putters. And I'd be set. I, I played a lot of disc golf before I started this channel doing just that. So yeah, with that said, uh, this is, I think, maybe the longest hole on the course. So I'm going to have to put everything I've got on it. There we go. By the way, I know I'm, my shoulder is shrugging and my elbow is collapsing down. I'm still working on that. But anytime I try to throw more than 40 miles an hour, Per my tech disc testing, I, I just can't maintain the integrity. So I'm still trying between that and not rounding. It's really hard working on both of those at the same time. And that's what I'm doing. Ah, it fell out of my hand. Too slick. Okay, I dried my hands off. I gotta try this again. I'm sorry, guys. I gotta, gotta throw this good once. Like like that first one. There we go. I felt like I got that one finally. But look at the stability on that. I will say that is probably a touch more stable than the Pro Plastic. Man, they're both, they're both pretty stable. That said, I don't think I got quite as good of a throw out of that disc as I did this. I felt like I was able to put a better throw into this disc. Okay, per bush now, we are 82 feet out, which is beyond the edge of my accurate putting. That said, there's also a uh, branch with uh, pine needles in the way. So I'm gonna see if I can Anheuser or something to get close enough to the basket. Although if it's not too far away, I, can, I should be, still be able to putt it. Yes, sir. I went along with the basket. Heck yeah. So at least I'm putting and approaching well enough. And my throws are about 50%, but you know, <clears throat> given that I'm using a disc I'm not as familiar with, although I have a lot of experience with, it's, it's been educational, I'm, I'm still having fun. Okay, so there's two ways to get to this basket. The straight way, I've actually reached before and birdied with a leopard. I do not have the horsepower uh, to get this to flex over and ride like that. A higher skilled, higher power player would do that. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna throw it that way and let it naturally hyzer towards the basket. There's not a play that I have in my arsenal that I can reach the basket with this disc. So, <clears throat> yeah. 
All right, take two, action. Yep, that's like 5%, 10% more stable, but no more than that, maybe 5%. Okay, we've come around the corner and the better throw is this Red Pro Gazelle. Okay, we have another 78 footer. I might be able to make it to the basket. Let's see. I didn't do any warm ups at all before I started playing. I just, I don't have it, didn't have the time today. Got off work late. Yep. Ho ho ho. I needed about 5% more power. Someone left their bottle out here. Kind of sad. It's covering up the sign. So, if I was a collector, maybe that'd be interesting to me. I guess. I don't know. Not a collector. Okay, I can't record this shot well with the camera. Normally I have someone with me, so I'm gonna have to arbitrarily move the lie about 20 feet to the left so I can have a better shot where you can see the disc fly in space. But to be fair, I'm also moving the lie back about 30 feet farther back from that location, or about 200 plus from the basket. I'm gonna take this Pro Gazelle, and throw it and let it fade. Very slight Anheuser. That was a little bit less than slight. Look at that. Okay. I bet you if I throw the other gazelle, it'll behave differently. Okay, let's try this more stable one, see if I can duplicate that. Nope, I didn't do that right. I adjusted. So if I had done a Goldie, uh, a switch between those two discs and throws, I might have seen them both a little bit closer to the basket. That said, I am happy with this second throw. I did make an adjustment. I just made a little bit too much of an adjustment to what was effectively the same disc. So, all right. Let's go. Okay, well, I definitely learned a lot by playing this round. I'm glad I had this, you know, review round. Um, I will know going forward to play around with the disc more before I turn on the camera. I uh, really thought I remembered how this flew from when I used it past, like this I've used uh, a few times before, and then the previous champion version I used. And these are just more stable, more overstable than I remember. So I'll remember that going forward and uh, learn from that mistake. Let's see if I can learn from other mistakes and throw this properly, or maybe better. We have to throw with some Anheuser and not too high. There we go. I did kind of push back on that a little bit too much, but that was, that was the right idea. And to be fair, I don't think if I threw this disc, I, I just don't think it would have fought out that much. So, all right, let's make a little more of adjustment. I'm gonna come over here a little bit more, try to make a slight correction, but not an overcorrection, because I've already got a slightly more overstable disc, so I don't wanna release it flat. Now, a little bit more of an Anheuser. There we go. See, I still managed to push it in there. Okay, live and learn. So check this out. I did actually make enough of a correction to have a putt here. I'm impressed. So yeah, I'm really happy with how this round ended up. <laughs> I wasn't so happy in the beginning because my throat was even worse and my performance was worse, but I seemed to have dialed things in a little bit better. So anyways, yeah, that's gonna do it. And hopefully you guys can see the basket well enough. <sighs> Not gonna do it. <laughs> All right, well, that is gonna do it for this video. I did have a lot of fun making it. I'm hoping that that showed up <laughs> while I was doing it. Um, let me just say a couple things about these <clears throat> while I am thinking about it. So will I bag these discs? Uh, not at the same time. So I'm gonna add this back into my regular bag, my cart, so to speak, because it's a cart, uh, because it's useful. And I'm taking the nine speed discs out of my cart because I just can't throw them the way I want to. My form is still a work in progress. So for my normal cart, this is gonna go back in here. I think I'm gonna also put my cheetah back in here so you'll be, you'll, you'll be seeing my star cheetah and maybe even my champion whip it because I got another whip it <clears throat> uh, to replace the DX whip it I lost a long time ago. This one here, the glow on this is super bright so I can't make it a wall hanger, but this will go on my glow bag for those of you that know me, I play go, glow rounds of disc golf, often with Dead of Night disc golf um, from time to time. Um, but that, that's my jam. I like uh, nighttime golf because when you're in Houston, Texas, it's often over 90 degrees throughout six, seven, eight <laughs> months of the year. 
and it's nice playing a round of night disc golf when you can. So that's where this one's going to go. So I'm bagging both of these, uh, and I'm, I feel like this is fitting a slot I don't have. I'd rather have one of these discs fit a slot I could use than use discs that are edge cases that I don't think I would use all those nine speeds as much as I would use any one of these discs in my cart. So that is going to do it. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already as I'm going to have a lot more videos like this with Sean and with others. A lot more fun challenges that are a little bit different than your typical just playing around a disc golf. I hope you guys will subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.